Hey, what's going on? Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian from Coastal Sports Cards, bringing you our first ever presentation of cards from my personal collection. Uh, I've had a couple of requests from some different people uh, to highlight some of the cards that I've got in my collection, and just wanted to start off with uh, a card today. Thought it would be fun um, to take a look at this 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle and tell you guys a little bit about the history of this card and for myself and then just overall with the card itself. Um, obviously one of the iconic cards of this hobby. Um, one actually just sold for $12.6 million I read this morning. Uh, it was a SGC 9.5. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw the, the news on that. So that set a record for the most valuable card ever sold. And uh, obviously what I have here doesn't carry that type of a value but it is still uh, an iconic card. Uh, one that, you know, for the grade presents pretty well. Uh, it's a, it is a PSA one. However, I think it has pretty good eye appeal and that was the reason I picked it up back in 2016. Um, so a lot of people ask me what I paid for it. So it's been six years ago. And the pretty cool thing is um, it's been a really good investment. So I spent uh, about $9,000 Back in 2016, it was originally a SGC-1, and uh, last year at the National, I decided to cross it over to PSA, and I uh, was happy to see that it was able to cross over from a 1 to a 1, and it added a significant val amount of value, probably added about five grand. Uh, it cost me about a thousand to get it to get it crossed over, and was able to add about five grand to the value of the card, which sits anywhere from thirty to forty thousand today. So. You can see in six years, I was able to, uh, to you know, it was quite a, quite a good investment. Um, let's take a quick break. I just want to give you guys our information for those that are that are on and don't know about Coastal Sports Cards. You can take a screenshot here of our address. We're in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Our email address is coastalsportscards at yahoo.com. Our phone number there is 843-446-5991. Our website is coastalsportscards.com. On eBay, we are Coastal Sports Cards 1. Uh, Facebook, we are Coastal Sports Cards. And then Instagram, Coastal Sports Cards 1. And we are also selling a good bit on Whatnot right now. So you can check us out on Whatnot. We stream several times per week, five, six, seven times a week. Uh, we have all types of different, different things. Uh, not a lot of vintage, some vintage baseball. Um, but a lot of modern relics and autos. And the cool thing about us is we start everything out at a dollar for the most part. Um, so we, you know, we feel like we've got a good following. I think we have over 4,000 followers now. So we, uh, we we got a lot of good stuff that we sell and whatnot. But also check out our website and our eBay and you'll find some other good things there as well. Uh, so back to the card, um, you know, looking at the condition, you can see there's, there's really not any major creases or anything of that nature. There is some surface wear where you can see a little bit of white scuffing, but nothing too bad. Uh, it does have some corner wear, which to me, that doesn't really bother me very much. Um, I'm all about the picture and the, the cleanliness of the card. Also the centering, uh, this card is very hard to find centered. You will find a lot of them that are way off center. Uh, and also they'll have a diagonal or diamond cut. You can see this one does have that type of a cut with a slight tilt, where if you look at the left border, the picture is closer to the border on the top left than it is on the bottom left. Uh, but still, really good looking card. Um, so the reason for the technical grade was the paper loss on the back. It's probably taped to a wall at one point. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see the number of the card because of that, but it is missing a couple of letters and some statistics. Um, but if you read the back of the card, it's pretty cool what it talks about. Switch hitting Mickey Mantle's Harold or just Joe DiMaggio's successor. He alternated between the Yankees and Kansas City during 51, batting in 50 runs in one month for the American Association Club at 17. Mickey, Mickey brought in as a shortstop for Providence, batting 313 in 89 games. The Yanks brought him to join after he hit 26 home runs and led the league with a 383 batting average in 1950. So uh, pretty cool. He's got his, obviously what most cards have, where he was born. I think a lot of people know he's from Oklahoma. Um, 
185. So definitely not big for uh, for today's standards. Um, but there it is. Definitely uh, one of the top two cards in my collection. Very happy to have it. Uh, a couple other things of interest that I researched before starting this video was the population report. So if you look at all the PSA mantles, there's obviously some raw ones out there, some SGC, some BGS, but the majority of them are graded by PSA. There's about 1,700 total graded. Uh, so if you think about that, that's not a lot of cards. I mean, today they make thousands and millions of, of a single card. Um, so there's only about 1,700 left in existence, and I'll get into that, into the reason for that in a little bit. Uh, it's card number 311 in the 1952 top set, which that was this was the first year that they did the large um, cards. If you think about this first year of tops, oh, you got you had the 51 tops redbacks, but so the first year that tops really made a, a full set. And if you think about Bowman, uh, who tops and Bowman were the same company. Um, they made the smaller cards, like the Mantle Rookie and the Maze Rookie, the smaller Bowmans. So this was the first year they made the large cards, and they kept with this size for five or six years after until they went to the standard size card that you have today. Um, but if you look at the population report, there's 169 authentic graded, which are altered uh, some, some way. Uh, with my grade, there's 315. Um, there's about 79 uh, PSA 1.5s, about 300, and there's half grades, just take a bit, and qualifiers, so I'm including all of those. So there's about 300 2s, about 100, and, or about 250 threes, uh, about the same for 4s, 5s, there's about 200. 6s, it starts getting a little less, there's about 140. And then 7s, there's only about 100, not even 100, about 90. Eights, there's about 48, and nines, there's, yeah, nines, there's eight. And the cool thing about this card is there's actually three tens in the world. None have been sold ever that I know. I don't think any have ever actually sold. Whoever got them graded, they came from the uh, Mr. Mint Discovery, um, which is the same place that SGC 9.5 came from. Um, and I think they were just graded and they were never sold. So, Estimates were 10 million for a, for one of those, but now that a 9.5 SGC sold for 12.6, you know, if every one of those hits the market, it really, it could be 20, 30, 40, 50 million. I mean, who knows? Uh, just amazing that a card could go for that much money. Um, also I'll note that a nine sold for 5.2 million. Uh, I remember that a couple years ago, I believe it was. Eights are around 1.8 million. And then sevens, you drop down to about 300,000. Sixes are about 125,000. Fives are about 100,000. Uh, fours are about 90,000. Threes are 65,000. Twos are about 50,000. Uh, and then, like I said, the ones are anywhere from 30 to 40, with the average of being right about 34,000. Uh, so pretty, pretty cool stuff there. Um, you know, just a few more things to, to go over here. Just want to read, uh, this is from JustCollect.com. Uh, one of the card collecting's greatest classics, Mantle's Topps Rookie Card, is the key to the 1952 top set, and without question, the most popular and valuable post-war baseball card in existence. But it wasn't just Mickey's otherworldly talents that lifted the status of this card to its lofty heights within the hobby. That would be entirely too cut and dry for us as collectors, because as you know, we all love a good story and a little mystique. Some greater substance that goes beyond the stats on the on the back of his card. And the boy, the tail of the mantles, and the high number colleagues has all of that and more. Just as it, just as the practice today, the, the 1952 top set was released to the public in the spring of that year in two series. A low number, which was numbers 1 through 310, and a high number, numbers 3 through 11. The initial offering, which coincided with the start of the baseball season, sold out at a furious pace. Youngsters excited by the fresh start of, for their local teams just couldn't get enough of these colorful, well-crafted cars. The buying frenzy continued through July, and with every pack that sold, Berger and Gelman's excitement, those, those were the creators, uh, and expectations rose in anticipation of the release of the second series. Unfortunately, though, their youthful inexperience became apparent when they, mis, when they misread its release. 
So this, or missed time the release, excuse me. So this is where it gets really interesting and what really creates the value for this card. By the start of the 1953 season, concern turned into panic as nothing was more irrelevant to children than collecting at the time of last year's card, than, at the time than last year's cards. Like all kids, they wondered what was new and different when it sent Berger and Gilman scrambling to come up with creative ways to move their inventory. So I think what was going on is, you know, the season, the season had already started for the next year. Uh, football was going on. So, you know, there, there really wasn't a lot of, uh, I guess, football had, had already completed for the NFL. Um, but the kids just had other things on their mind. It was kind of, it was just kind of a distant memory to them. So despite their efforts with uh, partnering with carnivals, toy companies, and promotional campaigns, hundreds of cases still sat unopened in their warehouse. 1953 turned into 54 and into 55 with each passing year and the 1952 issue fell further from the minds of everyone, including the pioneering pair. So this is when it gets crazy. So by 1960, it's been eight years of, of frustration. They finally had to do something with these cards. So they were faced with a warehouse still filled with cases and cases of the 52 top second series. They decided it was time to cut their losses and make room for the new business, for a new business. A call was made for a garbage barge um, to come into, and they basically took these 300 to 500 untouched cases, according to Berger's statement. So he talked in a, a copy of Tough Stuff magazine, which is an old magazine they had 20 years ago, a uh, 2001 copy where they celebrated the 50th anniversary of Tops. Um, he talked about how they took 300 to 500 cases of uh, high number uh, cards. And within an hour, they were all loaded <clears throat> and the ship made its way towards the open waters where they would later rest thousands of Mantles, Jackie Robinsons, and Eddie Matthews, who those are the three big cards in the high number set. I think uh, there's some of like Hoyt Wilhelm's rookies in there, I think Campanella. Um, but they basically threw all, all those cases away and they're in the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, just, just a crazy story. Um, you know, back then they had no idea what these cards were going to be worth. They were just worried about creating space for, I mean, yeah, they would have liked to have sold them, but they were more concerned with creating space in their shop or their, their warehouse to uh, figure out what else they were going to do to make money. So pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and that's, uh, this is one of the few that remain. So like I say, there's 1700 uh, PSA graded copies. You know, I would guess there's probably 2,500 to 3,000 in the world if you were to add them all up. Uh, super rare and very proud to have one. And I uh, appreciate you guys joining today. And I'll try to do this some more with some other things from my personal collection. Again, Coastal Sports Cards, 411 Broadway Street, Myrtle Beach. You can email us, call us, check out our website, our eBay, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, guys, have a good one.